Good afternoon again, everyone. So uh, I'll be uh, presenting in behalf of uh, Edmund. Yeah. Okay, so I'll be talking about uh, different electric vehicles classifications first, because uh, this will show you how wide range uh, is av available to electric vehicles right now. And of course, it follows na napakarami rin pwedeng paggamitan nun. Okay. They're going to look at EVs and tourism, EVs and logistics, EVs and field services, EVs and LGUs, and then some key points. Okay. Um, so these are the different types of uh, electric vehicles that we have right now. So we have the electric mobility scooters. So these are vehicles that are uh, specifically designed for the disabled or for the, for the aged. Uh, so yun talaga yung gamit nila. But, but of, of course, we see them around na ginagamit ng mga lengke or, or ginagamit ng, ng adult uh, na, na able naman. Okay? So uh, sabi nga nila, it's fun in the Philippines. So kahit ano ginagamit sa kahit saan. Okay. The next is you have a category L1 and category L2 um, <clears throat> vehicles. Uh, L, L, category L1A and then category uh, L, L1B. And then you have category, um, yeah, L1A and then L1B. So okay, these are light, uh, light electric uh, vehicles. Uh, L1A, these are, um, these are, these are um, um, two wheelers. L1B, these are, these are three wheelers with maximum speeds of around 50, uh, 25 kilometers per, per hour. So medyo mabagal, medyo maliit, but we see them all around. Uh, kinagamit pa tayo pang hatid ng mga anak, pang malengke. Okay. Then we have L2B. Okay, this, this, um, this is a bigger version of uh, L1B and L1A. Yeah. And um, mas, mas ferdy lang siya kumpara, kumpara doon sa dalawa. And then uh, we have also L3, which is the normal motorcycle. Uh, the maximum speed is around 50 kph. Um, so this is unlike L1A, L1B, where in medyo mababa yung speed. Okay, this one is mas mabilis yung speed niya. Mas, uh, mas malaki siya. Ito yung mga dapat kinagamit for, for deliveries. And then we have L4. Okay, L4 is an electric bicycle actually, pero may sidecar. Then you have L5, which, which is the symmetrical type of a of, of bicycle. Then you have L6, these are quad cycle, quadricycles. Smaller ones, around up to four, four kilowatts in motor. While L7, these are bigger quadricycles, but a lot smaller than the normal car. And then um, you have uh, L6 and L7, their uh, max speeds are both limited to 50 kph. If you go beyond 50 kph and it's for passenger use, then they're classified as category M. So the, um, the electric chip that we know, okay, that's category M. Okay, the normal uh, passenger cars that we know, those are category M. And category M, these are vehicles for, for goods transport and uh, for, for, for other um, utility applications. So they're considered as category M. And then, of course, lastly, we have the you have the electric buses. So as you will see in here, napakarami. So it means there's, there's electric vehicles is beyond public transport. Personal use, corporate use. Um, we're now all, all, all are now present in almost all, all uh, vehicle, uh, vehicle types. Okay, very common sa atin right now in category L1A, category 1B, and category 2B. So I think kahit saan kayo umigod right now, nakikita niya. No? So marami mga China-made mod units right now na nagdilipa na. And uh, it's very um, very cheap. So maraming bumibili sa, sa kanila. Now, uh, electric vehicles and tourism. Okay, so you will see in there actually on, on your left, uh, yung picture ni Edmond Araga. Okay, the one in blue na naka, naka, um, naka sunglasses. Uh, nasa Boracay siya actually ngayon. Kaya, hindi, kaya, kaya he's not the one presenting this. Uh, he's in Boracay right now uh, together with, with Nissan Philippines to launch Nissan Leaf for, for, for hotels there for tourism use. So um, electric vehicles, electric cars, are now slowly go going into tourism right now also. Uh, slowly going into hotels as the luxury uh, luxury uh, car services. 
So um, it's it's now penetrating the tour the tour agency the tourism uh, the tourism uh, industry. On, on the upper right, okay, this is also being done here in the Philippines. You have like a golf cart like vehicles, electric vehicles that are used for for uh, for tours, uh, for slow moving tours. No, so yeah, so that is also very very common. And of course, um, in other countries, we still don't have one in here. Uh, electric vehicles are also used as shuttle vans. Okay, the newest that we have is the one of Gets. Okay, however, that is not. Um, it's of a bigger size than okay, than um, than this one. So these are the type of vehicles that are used for tourism. So we have locally, we now have electric cars that are sold in the market. Uh, for the uh, for the um, um, golf carts, we have locally made golf carts that are sold in the, that are sold in the market. Of course, you can have the choice always to buy an imported one. But um, um, if you want to buy an electric van, it's still not available uh, locally. You might have maybe might have to to uh, to import them. This is electric vehicles and logistics. So from all sizes, you have either pedelec. So you have a pedal assist um, electric bike. That is very common in other countries. The second picture that you have there that is a a class L three motorcycle. That is uh, produced by um, K one of the close friends of EVAP, the president of the, the president of the Electric Vehicle Association of Malaysia. So the, the, they call this the Eclipse bikes. So these are being used right now by um, by KFC. So this is uh, through leasing. So the company leases these units to KFC, and then KFC operates them, and and they share with the they share with the with the, with the profit. And um, yeah, the, the one on the bottom left is that is a um, pedelec assisted uh, tricycle, pe 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 pedal assisted tricycle. Uh, that that could be an alternative to the normal electric bicycle that we see, the yellow one. Um, key for slow moving areas. Of course, being pedelec, that means that you're also reducing your battery size. You're reducing the cost. You're reducing the the motor size. It's a lot cheaper than the normal, normal uh, electric bicycles, and at the same time you solve the problem of uh, of range. And then um, you know the one below, the white one, okay, that is a uh, that's an electric van delivery van, um, a bit bigger than an e quad. Okay, that is very common also for for deliveries. It's a lot. It's a bit bigger than uh, than, than the electric bicycles a delivery van. And then, of course, you have the electric van and the uh, electric trucks okay, that is uh, being used right now by a lot of uh, logistics companies, global logistics companies, DHL, uh, UPS Express, UPS, um, FedEx. They're all using. Uh, most of them are have, are have, are now starting to use uh, electric vehicles in their uh, in their fleets. And um, this is an area that is uh, less uh, really focused on, but uh, this is actually an area where electric vehicles is really very useful. And I think at this point is already uh, uh, mature and uh, economically competitive to, to, uh, to look at. Okay. So you have inter-logistics. So it means these are vehicles in being operated within the facility of a, of a company. So it could be like um, in the vicinity of a farm, or in the vicinity of a of a factory. Um, the thing with these applications, they're not really that fast, so you don't require really very big motors. The area is pretty much controlled, so you can easily plug them in. Um, and then you can schedule things. So that's why okay, these applications for companies now getting very uh, at least abroad is now getting very uh, popular. So, um, but but LGUs can also, for example, use uh, electric uh, mini electric trucks for garbage collection, uh, for for maintenance work. Okay, the, the one that you have in there, the the the, the one with the green, it's uh, for a um, street uh, cleaning um, device. So you can fit an electric vehicle with a street cleaning device, and then it moves around. It does not need to be really fast, so it's you don't need bigger systems. So that's why it. This type of applications makes electric vehicles very, uh, very, uh, very viable 
from what I know, um, uh, Meralco is also now starting to adopt electric vehicles in their uh, service fleets. Um, yeah, they've been uh, they've been sourcing electric vehicles. Their minimum the minimum range that they're looking at is at least one hundred fifty kilometers, because their electric vehicles goes out of Metro Manila, because their service area is beyond Metro Manila. So yeah, so uh, some some even local companies are now looking at utilizing electric uh, electric vehicles in their in their fleet. Um, but of course, one area really, one, one application of electric vehicles okay, would be in local government uh, units. But whatever works in corporate corporate work, they also work in, in, in LAGUs because the, the, the applications, the services are basically the same. You need to maintain something. You need to bring goods from one point to another. You have to move around people. So basically the same. But it's a varied set of applications, unlike in public transport, it's only transporting people. But for, for LGUs, for corporate world, it's a varied set of a uh, set of um, of applications. Um, okay, right now, I'm going to show you a, a short video. This is what we're going to roll out in Pasig City. But is this also something that could this is designed? Uh, the system is designed for 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 local government units. But this is easily uh, adaptable for, 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 for the corporate world. Uh, there are some big corporations right now in the Philippines okay, that maintains uh, the, a shared fleet. So let's say you have uh, one, company A having several facilities in a city. And of course, uh, it, 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 it requires a varied set of, uh, set of uh, transport needs. So they just maintain a common fleet and then it's like a mini grab. It's a confined grab. Okay, and whenever they need it, they book it and then serve one area, uh, one, one, one facility, and then serve another facility, bring people around, can look at if they can integrate um, movements of people, movements of goods together so to, to serve on cost. Yeah. So this is the, the, the video that I'm going to show you basically does that. And this is what we're rolling out in, uh, in Pasig City. So that is a system that monitors your battery, uh, battery um, levels. Uh, the system decides uh, where do you charge, at what and at what, uh, and at what time of the day. Uh, it assigns the uh, services. So so uh, so we're rolling this out, and it's also something in passing. It's also something that could be adopted uh, in some corporate uh, in some corporate settings. Okay, but uh, before I end, just like to uh, bring up a certain uh, key points. Number one, electric vehicle is beyond e chips and e trucks because most of the time we talk about electric vehicles, okay, we're talking about e chips and e trucks, which is not actually the case. Um, 
And uh, in fact, some of these applications are easier to push, it's like intra logistics. He, it would even be good if Edmund is the one talking here because he's supplying electric uh, electric classicals, for example, for uh, for uh, um, Eurotex, and it's being used to move uh, goods within within the with, with, within the company. So low speed applications for it, you don't need really bigger motors. Uh, it's it's uh, low speed high port applications. This is where we this is really the regime of a. Uh, of a uh, of cheap electric uh, cheap electric uh, vehicles, so um, uh, that's all. That's all from my end. I'd love to answer questions later. So thank you very much.